If you're looking for the Bass Family cargo bike, you're in the right place. I'm comparing the Madsen bucket bike to the Radio Flyer, Furla, and Bunch bike. While the Madsen is definitely our favorite Electric Family cargo bike, I would love to hear in the comments which one you think is the best after you watch this video. Which is a follow-up to my last video where I did a more in-depth review of the Madsen cycle, some of our backstory about why it's working for our family, what makes it unique. In this video, we'll dive a lot deeper into some of the comparisons with other popular cargo bikes, but be sure to go back and check that out if you haven't already. And if you guys are new here, my name is Rachel. Welcome to The Confused Mom. I share baby and toddler product reviews, activities, as well as Montessori at home tips. And in the description box below, you can find chapters to skip to any relevant part of this video, as well as links to shop everything and the blog post version of this video, which goes into even more detail. So in terms of testing out competitors, we also own the Radio Flyer L885, which is another long tail cargo bike. The Radio Flyer comes disassembled and you have to pay like two to three hundred dollars at a local bike shop to get it assembled for you if you don't know what you're doing. It can hold up to two kids and a good amount of groceries. The bike weighs in at over 75 pounds and you really do feel it compared to the Madsen. The way that you get started on a Madsen is you just walk forward which releases the kickstand up and then you are on your way. Whereas with the Radio Flyer you have to hold the kickstand in place with one foot and then lift lift the bike over it to disengage it and it requires a good amount of muscle and stability. I cannot necessarily have all of my passengers loaded on the radio flyer before disengaging the kickstand. Instead, if I have a bigger kid with me, I have to disengage the kickstand hold it steady while the bigger kid climbs in. Whereas I can have everything loaded into the Madsen. And so you really just end up feeling the weight of it a lot more also in just how it drives. I'd say the two biggest differences between the Radio Flyer and the Madsen are the ride and the storage slash seating capacity. The Radio Flyer, I would say it rides more, maybe like a moped. I'm not sure, I've never ridden a moped, but it feels like you're riding more of like a motorized vehicle. Like you feel the weight of the bike. It's actually really hard to go slow on it because the handling of it is so heavy that I find that I need a little bit of speed to stay super straight on it. Whereas, like I said, the Madsen, it rides just like a regular bike. Whether I have the e-assist on or off, I can ride it feeling very comfortable and very stable without like swerving all around. The battery and motor are also a little bit different. So the Radio Flyer comes with a 500 watt battery. The Madsen comes with a 750 watt battery. So it's a range is quite a bit larger and I find that on the Madsen when I'm throttling it I can get up to like 30 miles per hour whereas the maximum speed no matter what my carrying load is if I'm throttling it on the radio fire I will never break 20 miles per hour. In terms of the battery gauge display on their screens, Radio Flyer has five bars that show and Madsen only shows four. I've ridden both bikes the exact same routes. Now I've never ridden either battery fully down to empty, but I've gotten close with both of them. In my personal guess and experience, it seems like the Radio Flyer, you get a longer distance on the battery compared to the Madsen cycle. But on the other hand, that's to be expected because I can carry more weight on the Madsen and it has a much larger range in terms of speed. And so if I'm like throttling up to 28 miles per hour, that's gonna drop a battery faster than if I'm throttling up to 20 miles an hour. So that's kind of my take on it. The I have to charge my radio flyer a little bit less than the Madsen, but with both of them, I've never run out. Kind of going back to the ride of the radio flyer, like I said, because that whole kickstand thing, it's definitely a little bit harder to get started with your kids loaded on the back already. It also makes it a little bit harder to park and it doesn't have a built-in lock like the Madsen does. So what happens with bikes like this, when you go ahead to engage the kickstand, you actually have to shift backwards a little bit. Meaning when I pull the radio flyer up to a bike rack, the wheel might be in the bike rack, but then when I go to engage the kickstand, it actually pulls the bike out of the bike rack and it's so I end up usually chain the front tire into the body of the bike so that way nobody can ride off with it. And there's also no keys on the radio flyer like there are 
more on the matte end, meaning it's just a little bit more susceptible if somebody were to take it for a joyride if you didn't lock it up. With the matte end, you just turn the keys, it locks the front wheel into place, and if you want to do some added security on the other side, they have this built-in lock, which you can lock around a bike rack or a bench or wherever. The other big difference is that the matte can hold up to four kids, whereas the radio flyer can only hold up to two if you purchase the additional cargo attachments. The Madsen comes with like everything you need to get going with your family. The radio flyer, you need to purchase the additional cargo attachment, which is suitable, I think, for kids five years old and up. And so if you do have a younger kid, you'll on top of needing to purchase that cargo attachment need the infant seat which can go on there so if you do have kids of mixed ages you can get them both on there but you're gonna be spending like an extra 600 plus dollars to get the full system to add two kids and of course that ends up eating your storage capacity if you're taking your kid with you to the grocery store the way that the radio flyer is set up you drop down these sides and so your kids legs need to come through there so you really only have the front basket for groceries or your kid will have to hold the groceries in place and then in terms of the furlough and bunch bike versus the Madison. I'm gonna lump these two together because they are essentially the same design and essentially the same bike, which we'll talk about that in a minute. So first and foremost, the Furla and the bunch bike are both tricycles with a front bucket, meaning that they have two wheels at the front and one wheel in the back. The Madison obviously is a regular bicycle. Now, obviously there's no kickstand with a tricycle because it is already stabilized on three wheels, which is nice. However, the Madison's kickstand is such a quick and easy learning curve that it is not a deal breaker or worth swaying your overall decision in my opinion. If it was versus the radio flyer, that's another story. So then in terms of the bucket in the front or the back, this is going to be a personal opinion. I am sure there are many families that will end up preferring a bucket in the front. But for me personally, having a bucket in the front, all that means is my kids are going to ask me for more snacks. Why can't I just help them open this? Can I police this? What's this? What's that? And I need to be focusing on riding the bike, not tending to my kids. And they seem to understand that much better being in the back. If we were making eye contact, I don't know how that would really go. I am not the type of person that feels comfortable carrying a conversation while going for a bike ride in general. So I like them being in the back. I pop my headphones in. I listen to my music. They really do need me. I can slow down. I can still hear them. I can get a couple sentences back to them. But generally speaking, they know... Mm, this is not the time to ask me to police them or be the snack helper. And I personally really like the quiet break after the beach to just ride home listening to my music instead of having to still be on with them from the beach back to home and then getting them all cleaned up at home. And then more than that, I personally find it significantly easier and safer to turn with a rear bucket versus a front bucket. Even when you look at these bikes on their buckets, they tend to have these wire or metal bars and that's because the tip hazard is so great on them that they had to put something in place to kind of bolster it if you were to fall. In my experience, when I was turning with it, I basically had to come to a full stop almost in order to turn it and I still can't really do like a 90 degree turn. In terms of getting in and out of the buckets, both the Furla and the Bunch Bike offer upgrade options for you to add a door to your bucket to get in and out and that's because it is a much deeper bucket, I think. Don't quote me on that, I didn't do the measurements of it. Whereas the Madsen, the kids can climb in and out of this. You can even add these little rock climbing bags, which my kids all love. They had a level of independence, especially my two-year-old. Adults can just lift their leg and plop right in. It is really easy to get in and out, super comfortable. In terms of battery and motor, Furla is the weakest, coming in at 250 to 500 watt motors. Bunch is supposed to be similar to radio fires at 500 watts, but I have to say maybe it's because the one I was riding is like a half a mile from the beach, so the bike chain may have been rusted, but it did not feel like the radio flyer. It felt heavy. It felt sluggish. That was definitely not as easy of an experience as the radio flyer. And then Madsen comes in at the highest legal battery in the US at 750 watts. It's capped at 500 watts if you're in Canada for legal reasons, but that is definitely going to be your most powerful bike. And then in terms of inside the bike, what Madsen has that the other two don't have is little drain holes. So if you do get water in there for whatever reason, at least there's a spot for it to come out. Out. And then the inner capacity is a little bit different on these bikes too. Because the Madsen bucket actually is sitting on top of the rear tire, the middle of the bucket actually is molded to fit it. So you do lose some carrying capacity. 
capacity there. And I would say that's my biggest complaint with it, which is if I want to load my kids and a standard beach chair, it doesn't fit. Whereas in the bunch bike, it absolutely does. So what we do when we go to the beach as a family, I have the kids in mine. And then in the radio flyer, we bungee our beach chairs onto the cargo basket there. And then you can also get a beach chair like this that does fit inside of the Madsen cycle with kids. And then like I mentioned before, none of the competitors that I tested out, radio fire, for a lot or bunch have any suspension, whereas Madsen does. And then in my last video, I talked about my concerns with safety in Madsen because their seatbelt for kids only has it over the lap. Radio Flyer doesn't have one at all. Whereas the Furla and Bunch Pack have over the shoulder ones that are like a three point type of harness system. However, what I quickly realized and also common complaints on Reddit was that the shoulder straps didn't have a chest clip, meaning if you have a baby or toddler or preschooler who does not not like being strapped in they quickly shrug out of those making it just really kind of useless and even when I was playing around with the seatbelts on both of those I found that the way you can tighten the Madsons was just much safer overall like I said in the last video even after our fall the lap seatbelts being able to tighten those they worked perfectly and then the last little thing I want to say about Furla and bunch bikes which doesn't really have anything to do with Madsen but it's just a note if you are leaning towards the front bucket bike both of these are essentially Chinese resellers and what that basically means is you can go on aliexpress right now and purchase these bikes at a fraction of the cost of course you will have to cover shipping in most of those cases so the price isn't that drastically different but i am throwing that out there because with that in mind furla's customer service is kind of what you would expect from a chinese reseller company that's not first-hand experience that's just based off of the reviews that i've read whereas bunch bikes does have much, much, much better customer service. If you are gonna go with one of those two, I'd probably go with that, but I'd also price comparison against AliExpress as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, and drop me a comment below with what your experiences of Madsen bikes or any other family cargo bucket bike. And if you're just jumping in here, be sure to go back and check out my last video where I did an in-depth review of our Madsen bike. And until next time, my name's Rachel, have a good one.